In this video, I'm going to talk about the collections framework and specifically I'm going to talk about lists. So lists are the first thing we're going to talk about in collections and it's because they're the simplest and probably what you already would understand easiest based on having exposure to arrays. So the two type of lists we're going to talk about are array lists, which are simply kind of an array with a, a wrapper on top of it that implements the list interface. And we're also going to talk about linked lists, which are an entirely different data structure made up of nodes that point to each other in a linked chain formation. Um, but essentially, they're still storing data that's grouped together and ordered. So let's go back and do an actual uh, example first. So to start off, I just want to create an array list and add some things to it. Um, what I'm going to do is start with declaring the list interface, and that's just in Java Util. There's another list in Java AWT. Don't use that. Just use this one in Java Util. So the first thing that's going to ask me is um, to put in a generic type here. And what I'm going to put in is a string. You can put in any object in here. You can't put in um, base data types like integer or, or sorry, int or boolean or byte. But you can put in all of the uh, object wrappers if you need. So these, these brackets here, you just want to throw a class in here. And this is going to be essentially like an array of type string. So I'm just going to call this strings. And then on this side, you can't do new list because list is just an interface. And what you want to do is an actual concrete implementation. And the concrete implementation we're going to use is called ArrayList, as I mentioned before. When you hit Enter, it's going to, by default, especially if you're using a newer editor, it's going to use um, these empty uh, angle brackets here, where on the other side we actually had to put string. It's only optional to put it in on this side. So go ahead and don't bother with uh, putting in string on the angle brackets on that side. So this is now an empty array list, and we're going to be able to add data to it. And there are four operations you probably want to know uh, right off the bat, and those are add, remove, get, and size. So let's take a look at this. Strings.add. I'm a string. Strings.add. Whoops. Whoa. That was interesting. Uh, okay, another string, and what we're going to do at this point is say uh, CISO. Um, uh, let's let's take a string out and set it to something. So I added two strings into our list, and now I'm going to set a string and say um, second element equals. Uh, whoops, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, we're going to say strings.get0, and I'm going to do uh, sorry, it's 0 index, so you want to do 1 here. And we'll say second element right here. I'm going to go ahead and run this, uh, run as Java application, and you'll see I got that second element there. And because uh, Java is zero index, it still works the same as an array when you use the um, zero index to get the first thing in the array. So this is adding methods, or adding elements and getting elements, and you get by index position. So the second thing we're going to do is uh, print the size. And this works just like it sounds. The size of the list is uh, we're going to say strings dot size. Okay, two, right? That makes sense. We put two things in it. And so what we're going to do now is do strings remove 
and we're going to remove the first thing. Okay, and now we're going to say size of the list again. So that makes sense. We added something, we removed something from the first position, position and then we called size again and we got that. Um, so now, what happens if we try to get the first element? Because we know there's only one element into it, right? So let's look at the first element. Uh, I'm just going to call strings.get0. Interesting, right? So when we removed the first element, that means the second element moved into the position of the first element. So that's an interesting thing. In an array, that would not happen unless you completely created a new array and then moved everything from the original array back one space. So the array list gives you, or the sorry, the list gives you all kinds of nice uh, behavior on top of the base array. Okay, here's the really cool part. If I don't want an array list here, if I want a linked list, I can simply remove this and then put linked list. And the reason I can do that is because, whoops, there we go. The reason I can do this is because linked list also implements everything in the list interface. And add, get, size, and remove, those are all part of the list interface. So I can run the same code again, and it works exactly the same way as it did before. So you can see the power of the collections framework. It lets you change out implementations very easily by using these common interfaces. And you can read about the list interface. It has lots and lots of methods on it. Um, add, whoops, I didn't mean to click that. Uh, add, clear, contains, get, uh, iterator. So the, the, uh, the list interface has all kinds of useful things. Um, I want to go to this example really quick. And this example is just showing me adding things to an array list and um, printing things out. And eventually, I'm doing the same thing with a linked list. And also, I wanted to show the, the uh, iterator part of the collections. This is, this is um, what makes collections nice, is that you can just throw in a collections reference into this for loop shorthand, and then um, it'll iterate it over for it, like automatically for you. So let's just run this and see how this works. Okay, so first off, I'm printing out what is in the array list, kind of similar to that other program we wrote. I got the second element, and I'm printing the size. I'm removing something. I'm printing the size again. Okay, so we're down here. Um, I'm going through, and I'm basically doing the same thing again. Finally, I'm getting to a linked list. I'm adding stuff into the linked list. I'm printing things out of it. And then here's iterating over a linked list. So you can see these are basic examples of using an array list and a linked list. And when in doubt, just go ahead and use array list. Uh, linked list is maybe um, uh, kind of has more special behavior, especially in accessing. It's very slow. So if you think you're going to be accessing the elements by index a lot, um, definitely don't use a linked list because it's very slow for that. And next video, I'll show a micro benchmark between the two data structures, and you'll see just how fast and slow each of them are. So that's all for this video. Again, just remember when you're dealing with list, you want add, get, size, and remove, and that should get you most of the stuff you need to do. And of course, you can always iterate over these data structures. All right, thanks for watching.